Okay, so continuing where we left off, we have now split the polygon face using sketch into more regular shapes. We can now hex mesh these surfaces that I'm highlighting. Okay, so as we can see now, we get a much neater, higher quality mesh. One thing to note, because I'm using these 2D elements to seed a 3D mesh, I am not going to export these elements out to the solver, so they will be ignored when we come to do a simulation on this part. These two surfaces here are a little bit more tricky. We need to highlight and generate. And as you can see, it's tried to sweep those elements around the curve. So what we need to do is to generate the direction of which the elements will propagate. So there we go. So as you can see, that's now map those in nicely. And again, with this surface, there we go. What you will notice is these uh, mesh controls. We can um, control how these are displayed uh, here. Uh, icons pop up, and we can click these, and we can define the number of elements that we want on that particular edge. Okay, so we've got nice control over these elements. Uh, we can change any number. Oh, don't know what happened there. I will do that again. this to two elements, two elements, and we can accept that. So we then have a mesh collector with the 2D mapped mesh, uh, and this little circle it tells us that that isn't exported to the solver. We can then go in the nodes and elements toolbar and we can select elements to revolve. So make sure that this is set to element faces. Pick the elements. We need to specify a vector. So we're going to pick the x direction and we need to specify a point. So we can show that. So as you can see there we have now got a 3D mesh. now swept around. Let's have our geometry, so as you can see there we've got a nice set of elements. We can then reflect these, I could have uh, rotated those around 360 degrees but to show you some of the tools I'm going to now reflect those elements. So I'm going to select the elements making sure I've got solid elements checked and I'm going to pick the plane of which I want to reflect around do the same again and ok there I now have my original 3D mesh and the reflected meshes for this Example, I'm going to merge those meshes together and then I'm going to check the duplicate nodes about the mirror plane, mirror planes. I'm going to merge those nodes together. 
We could now, uh, we could keep this uh, 2D mesh. For this example, I'm going to delete that. We don't need it anymore. Delete the collector. So I have now got my geometry and my 3D mesh. It is worth noting that these um, elements and nodes are not associated to the geometry. So what I'm going to do is go back into the modeling application. I'm going to turn off the divide face. We've deleted the, the, the 2D elements. We don't need that anymore. I'm going to then I'm going to mirror this geometry. Apply. Okay, and then I'm going to combine, unite those bodies together. Okay, to give me the full 360 degrees. I'm going to go back into my advanced simulation, display the fem. Okay, so there's my geometry and my elements. I'm now going to go into my nodes and elements toolbar and I'm going to go to node association. I'm going to pick the mesh and I'm going to select the body. I'm going to apply and that's going to associate those nodes to the geometry. The advantage to that is that when we come to do a simulation, uh, if we want to add boundary conditions and or loads, constraints, um, simulation objects, we can choose uh, geometry rather than picking nodes. So we can save a little bit of time there uh, if we so wish. Okay, that is the, the end of this uh, example. Um, I shall be posting some more. Um, if you have any questions, just uh, post your questions and I'll try my best to uh, answer. Thank you for watching. Bye.